Hello, my name's Tony and welcome back to Predicted. In today's episode, we're gonna be going through a perfume parlor haul. Now, it's been a little while since I've done a perfume parlor video, so if you'd like to see what I've got, you know what to do, stay right where you are. So thanks for joining me, I really do appreciate it. It's been a little while, I said, since I've actually gone through anything from Perfume Pile. I've had some of these a little while, but I thought I'd collect a few and then maybe do a haul video together. I know haul videos are a favourite of mine to watch, so you know what, I thought, let's put a few of my acquisitions together in a haul video and tell you all about them, which I'm really excited to do. There are seven in total, and I'm not going to go into any massive detail on each one of them. So the first one was a 30 ml bottle. This is called Irwin, and the number on this is 0552. Now that is the easiest way to find the fragrance on the Perfume Parlor website. Just enter the code, it, then if the name changes, as they do often, you can still find it because they'll still use the original code every time. So type in 0552 and you'll come up with this fragrance. This is their interpretation of Creed's Arolfa. So let me give it a quick spray. Atomizers are very good on these. So the notes in this are violet, green notes, melon, lime, caraway, bergamot, jasmine, pepper, pine tree, nutmeg, cedar, oak moss, musk, amber and sandalwood. So there's quite a few notes in it. But this to me smells a little bit in the same realms of something like Silver Mountain Water. It's not the same, but I would put these in the same category from Creed. This is quite aquatic. It's a little bit salty. It smells a little tiny bit marine to me. And it is a blue fragrance in my eyes. But it does smell clean, it smells fresh, it smells a little bit watery. Quite sort of a translucent fragrance. It has a just ever so slight delicate hint of spices and woods. So to me it is a very very simple understated fragrance, something you could wear every day. I think it would shine better in spring and summer. I think this is a fantastic fragrance, I really do. Is it something I'd want to own the original after trying this? I'm not absolutely blown away by it and I'm not sure it would be my creed of choice. And this is what Perfume Parlor are so good for. I know it's not the original, and but it will give you an idea of what the original DNA will smell like. Sometimes they nail it, they really do. But this is good. It's not something that blows me away, but I think it would make a fabulous signature scent. The next fragrance is called Truthful Lips, and it is 1595. And this is the 13 ml bottle. And this is their interpretation of Kisses Don't Lie from Killian. The notes really intrigue me on this one. The notes are pink pepper, bergamot, dark chocolate, violet leaf, rose, raspberry, papyrus, and myrrh. Let me just give this a quick spray. The whole fragrance, I think, is based around that rose note. And it is a really pretty, it's almost sort of creamy rose. It's not a dark, deep rose. The fragrance this reminds me of the most is actually Noir de Noir. So a creamy, chocolatey, Turkish delight style rose. So it's very, very pleasant and it's a nice alternative to that. It's basically Noir de Noir with a slight hint of fruits in the background. So really nice, pleasant fragrance and definitely worth trying out if you're into rose fragrances. But yeah, this is my Turkish delight of the bunch. It's a nice fragrance and it's Truthful Lips 1595. Let's get on to the next one. The next one is called Special Aqua and the number on this is 0275. And this is their interpretation of Gypsy Water by Byredo. I've not got any Byredos in my collection. So I added a couple in this haul just to see if I would like the DNA. So the notes in this are pepper, juniper, lemon and bergamot, orris root, pine needles and incense, and sandalwood, vanilla and amber. So from the notes, I thought that I would really, really like this. And I do, it's a nice fragrance, but it hasn't, blown me away, very much like the first one. It smells quite watery. It smells a little bit sort of translucent again. It doesn't smell like there's a massive, massive backbone to it. It does smell clean, soft, almost like clean laundry sheets type smell to it, along with 
some soft sweetness, some soft citruses, some soft piney woods, slight gin note in there as well. But overall, it's quite a soft fragrance. This particular fragrance, it lasts okay on the skin. I would imagine it lasts just as long as the original, but it has given me an idea of what Gypsy Water's like. It's a very understated fragrance. You're never gonna offend anybody. And this has just given me an idea of what that's like. Is it something I'll be rushing out to buy? No, probably not, but it's nice nonetheless. And that is Special Aqua, and that's their interpretation of Gypsy Water by Byredo. Let's move on to the next one. Now the next fragrance is just, I got for a bit of fun. I was really intrigued to see what it was like, but I ordered a big bottle. This is the 50 ml bottle. And the reason I got this was because if I didn't like it or it was a little bit adolescent or a bit sort of young for my taste, I could pass it on to my daughter. I read the notes on it and I thought, you know what, I've got to try it. So it's called Bubblegum Ice Cream and that is 2039. And this is an original creation from Perfume Parlor. So the notes in this are apple, pear and sugary notes. Strawberry, peach, orange, spicy cinnamon, raspberry and vanilla. And this is, it is fun. It actually smells really, really good. Is it something I'm gonna wanna smell of? Probably not. I think it would make a wonderful sort of air freshener type fragrance. On skin, it, it just feels like, I just feel like I would smell a little bit like a teenage girl. It's a bit immature. And I know I'm immature, but it doesn't really suit me as such. But I really do think it's a fun fragrance. It reminds me of Love Heart Sweets. It reminds, it's a little bit powdery. It reminds me of sort of a sherbet. It smells a little bit like Snow Fairy from Lush. If you know that fragrance, you'll know what I mean by you probably won't want to smell of it all the time, but you love the smell. Bubblegum ice cream, it just fits it perfectly because that vanilla and because of that bubblegum scent that all the fruit notes and the sugary notes give off, they've actually done a really good job with making it into what it says it is. Actually, a lot of fun, worth checking out. I will pass this on to my daughter. I haven't worn it much as you can see, but I have sprayed it a few times because I really like the smell of it. So let's move on to the next one. The next one is called African Art, and this is 1863. This is their interpretation of Byredo's Bala Freak. It's another fragrance I haven't tried. Like I've said, I haven't tried any Byredo's yet. I do need to get my nose on a few of them. So again, this is just to give me an idea because I see the original of this featured quite a lot on Instagram, and I know there's a few people that love it. The notes on this are lemon, bergamot, African marigold, neroli, violet, jasmine, amber, musk, vetiver, and Moroccan cedarwood. So what does this smell like? Again, like two others I've already tried, it is a bit light. It is a little bit citrusy. Again, it's a little bit watery but it has got a little bit more depth than the other two that I tried earlier on. It's got a slight warmth to it, like a sun note is the best way I can explain it. I think it's because of the name being on an African plain and you've got that slight sort of vetiver note coming from the dried grass, but that mixed with a little bit of citrus and some musk but the little bit of warmth from the amber make it a little bit more interesting than the previous two that I've mentioned, which was Gypsy Water and Irwin, which was the Creda Rolfa. So this is probably my favorite of those three, but it still, to me, smells a little bit watery and translucent. It doesn't smell overly strong. It's quite a light signature scent, I would say. Very, very pleasant. I've only literally worn this, I think, once or twice. It did sort of last just a few hours. It was sort of three, four, five hours, I think. But it's not something, again, I'm gonna rush out and buy the original because of this. So it's not gonna be at the top of my buy radio list, I'm afraid. But I can see why people like it. Very, very pleasant. It's never gonna offend anybody. It's just got some slight depth and some slight warmth that make it more interesting than the other two, like I've said. Let's move on to the next one. The next one is called Eminent Wood. Never gonna use that expression again, honest. <laughs> I 
Eminent Wood. Zero, two, two, three. It's Bare Interpretation of Oud for Greatness by Nishio. I've got a decant of the original. I've got a really, really good interpretation of this by another company as well, but this is very good. It's very, very much like the original. They have nailed, absolutely nailed the DNA. It smells just the same to me. I can't really pick out anything that's really any different to it. And that is genuine. The notes of this are nutmeg, saffron and lavender, oud, musk and patchouli. But I get this almost sort of slightly sickly sweet note to it. It reminds me a little bit of from a distance, not up close, from a distance. If you smell this on someone else from a little bit of a distance away, you get a little bit of a Baccarat Rouge 540 vibe going on and I think that's from a note in there that's unlisted and that's Aoife Malto. I'm sure of it. This is a little bit pungent if I'm being honest. It's not something that's going to be at the top of my list to wear although when I have worn it people have liked it. It's quite sweet smelling. The oud never really takes over but it's there just slightly in the background. You get a lot of sort of lavender but not the flowery lavender no that mixed with the patchouli and stuff makes it slightly more earthy and woody than that but it is spicy but not in like a, a really overpowering way the notes do blend quite well together they suit each other and they complement each other well and the oil with this has actually been blended quite well i would say I find it a little bit super sweet if you overspray this it could become quite cloying like i said a pleasant dna if you go careful on the trigger, I think lots of people do enjoy this and I think people around you would enjoy it too. I think they'd be intrigued as to what it is. I don't think many people would have smelt anything like this. And I think that's hence the hype of the original. But like I said, I've got a 10 mil decant of that and I've enjoyed it and this is very, very close. So that is Eminent Wood and the code on that was 0223. On to the last one. Now, I haven't written down any notes on this one. This is called Royalty Not Needed. 1944 is the code, and it's another interpretation of another Killian fragrance. They just call it on the website, it's their interpretation of Killian's Princess. Now, as a result of smelling this, it reminds me of a few other things, like Love Don't Be Shy, 100 Silent Ways, Mmm from Juliet Has A Gum. It's that type of fragrance. It has this sort of sweet, almondy, Play-Doh note to it. And Bex really fell in love with this initially, and you can see there's a little bit more gone out of this one. Now, we haven't used it all, and the reason for that was because we went and bought the original. Bex got this as a result of trying this. I think the original does smell better, but actually, believe it or not, this does last longer. So, and that is, uh, I think the oil concentration's a bit higher in this. It is a great way of testing out what this one would be like. A very enjoyable fragrance, doesn't last the longest. This actually lasts longer. This is slightly better, but well blended, slightly more subtle, not so loud actually, and it's a really nice fragrance. So that is called Royalty Not Needed 1944, and that is Killian's Princess. Probably, I would say, my favourite pickup of the whole lot. Certainly from Becker's behalf it was. Interesting pickups. I hope you enjoyed the little haul video. I am planning on ordering some more soon. I'll be back with another one of these quite soon, I think. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you again in the next one. And don't forget to keep smelling wonderful.